Welcome back to another You Said It podcast. Rick Gorman here, and uh, we're very excited to have uh, back on the road here doing a, a podcast. It's been a crazy summer here at the U Center, so our weekly podcast has put a little bit on hold, but this is one that I've been actually pretty excited about for the last couple of weeks. Um, I've got some guests here from us, uh, two from the school department and also one from our own Youth Center here. And we're going to talk a little bit about an amazing collaboration between the Youth Center and the North End of the Public Schools. Um, and it's, it has a lot to do with trying to make the Youth Center summer programs all-inclusive. And uh, we're actually trying to do that. So I brought on some of the people that actually make that happen. So without further ado, let me first introduce our guest tonight. So Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Michael Vervo. I work at Thompson Elementary during the school year as a substitute teacher, um, sometimes in the Thrive Behavior Classroom. And during the summer, I am a TA at the uh, Summer Fun Program. Awesome. And Sabrina. Hi, everyone. My name is Sabrina Freilich, and this is my sixth summer working at Summer Fun, now as a co-coordinator. Um, I just graduated from UMass Amherst with a degree in early childhood education, and now I am pursuing a master's in special ed. So thank you for having me. And our last guest is where I feel a little bit old. Uh, our last guest is the senior member of the three guests today, but he actually was a kid when I first started here, so I do feel old. So Tom DiStefano, talk to us a little about yourself. Thanks for having me, Rick. Um, Tom DiStefano, I work for the North Denver High School. I am a mental health counselor and adjustment counselor in the team program over there. Um, support some students that need that type of support therapeutically. Prior to that, I worked at Kittredge Elementary School for a year, doing the same with the little guys. And this is my third summer um, collaboration with the Youth Center, um, kind of overseeing um, the staff I work with and the kids that I work with um, in coordination with the great summer fun team they have here. That's great. Uh, so let me first start where we started this. About three years ago, um, I met with Jen Price uh, and then Donna Strait, uh, the special ed uh, director, I would say, uh, assistant superintendent. And we talked about um, my goal of making the Youth Center Sun programs all, all inclusive, but also the need from the school department for some summer program and getting their kids uh, involved with some recreational type programs. So we sat down and I had a great uh, conversation, a number of conversations with the entire special ed pro team within the school system. So we had all the schools represented. We had Donna Strait, Jen Price was involved. and. Uh, we sat down and said, you know, how do we get some of the, the kids from the school department into our program? And again, as, it, it was, as I said, it was going through our goal of being all-inclusive. So we were very open to the idea. And in the first year, we had a number of kids at both of our summer fun sites, uh, the summer fun sergeant, which is our younger kids, and summer fun drumming, which is a little bit of our third, fourth, and fifth graders. So, you know, the first year we, we tried this out, and it has been a successful. This is our third year doing it right now. Uh, Dr. Greg Gilligan, our, our new superintendent, has embraced this and wanted to continue the work we've done. Uh, Donna Strait has moved on, and obviously we have a new uh, director, uh, which Tom will be talking a little bit about her involvement with us. And it's just something that we're pretty proud about. So what we're going to talk about today is, how, you know, how this works, you know, uh, you know, the ins and outs of it, um, you know, maybe even some of the uh, the roadblock areas that we've kind of had to deal with and um, some of the future that we actually have for this. So I'd like to first ask Tom, you know, how did you get involved in terms of, of being the person doing this? And how do you see it from the school department's take on uh, the program and how we get kids involved with this. Okay. Um, well, I remember it was towards the end. Of, it was in the spring. Uh, we we're at Kittredge School, and you came walking down the steps, and you said, "Hey, you know, I got this idea, and I'm meeting with the special ed department." And then Marcy Bacuzzi, who's currently the um, the director of special ed uh, for the district, um, you know, came was some of the, the person with the original discussion with Rick and. They came to me and said, hey, Tom, how would you like to, um, you know, provide support for these kids? You do such a good job in the therapeutic program at Kittredge. I said, I'm all in on this. You know, like Rick said earlier, um, I, I came here a lot on field trips and school dances when I was a kid. So I was definitely familiar with Rick and the great program that they ran. But I, I wasn't too familiar with summer fun in general. So then this collaboration um, was just an instant hit in my mind because there's there were so many youngsters that need this that are on IEPs for social emotional issues or whatever and what they didn't have though was a real home for them we provided counseling we provided things that they needed but I think the word fun wasn't there 
and then with this idea that was that we came up with it just it was a no-brainer so when marcy approached me and in the principal at kittredge and, and rick i said all right i'm in on this and from there we developed it um and it's getting stronger each year and i know rick's gonna ask questions around how we're gonna make it stronger later but um every single kid that we work with has is supported it's not just the kids that i might oversee in my staff but every kid is supported in such a great way um really cared about it's just a great program um at first i just want to i the staff that we have there um it's a real team approach there's um there's five other staff members that work in collaboration with me and they do all the heavy lifting to be honest so i really couldn't do it without all these guys so you know there's rob jody mike um, megan Marissa and Lindsay um, all have done a great job, so I want to make sure I give them a shout-out real quick. Absolutely. And we're going to talk to Michael about this because uh, I think this guy's a rising mm -hmm. shine. I'm going to tell you, Tom, Thank I might you. try to steal him at some point. That's going to be tough because I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm working on my end. So one of the first things was a little bit of anxiety for me was um, I need to remind people my staff is high school and college kids, and 66% of them are high school kids. Uh, they're not special ed teachers. They're not trained. Um, uh, so I do have some great college kids that have an interest in special ed, and the exciting thing is once we started this program, I have, I have some college kids who now want to be special ed teachers because of all of this, which is great. We had always had a buddy system here. We've had that since we started where we – hook up some kids that may need some extra support. It could be a check-in. It could be actually even a one-on-one. -on -one. So we had the experience of doing this. But with that, we, you know, with some of the kids we you know, might be getting, um, I needed to make sure we were going to get resources to help us. And with that was some great staff. You know, you've mentioned all the names, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but along with that staff, just having you around on a regular basis, checking in on your staff, helping us. And we started off by doing our summer training. So we do an unbelievable 12 hour summer training for all of our kids. And we have the school department NAP staff come in for about an hour. And they give us an idea of maybe some of the kids that are going to be in the program, you know, some of the assistance that they may need. But I've always said from the beginning, some of the strategies that people like Tom and, and Michael talk about help us with all the kids there. Yeah. I do even joke sometimes that some of our more difficult kids are not even part of that program. Mm -hmm. They're just so-called regular kids, right? So um, it's been a great, my staff knows who the kids are. They get the training uh, that they need for that. And then Obviously, having you guys involved with us on a daily basis ha has been unbelievable. So um, take me through a little bit, uh, Tom, and Mike can jump in too, is so how does a kid get identified for this program? You know, I know when some of our listeners hear this, there might be an interest uh, if they're appropriate to be part of this program. Can you give us a little bit on that? Sure. So like you, you know, any kid's welcome, of course, you know, um, as far as signing up for summer fun through you guys. Where we identify in the schools are, there's kids that need that that extra support. You know, they might have, um, I'll use just like a broad term, a social emotional diagnosis um, on an IEP, and they get supports in school. They get it through, you know, Mike's school over at Thompson. They get it through the Kitchard School. We have the therapeutic programs right there, and any other school really where where that's identified. And from there, the team leaders coordinate with now Marcy and we have these discussions to say hey you know Tom uh, DiStefano is is a student who we have that we support therapeutically and academically and this student will be would be great for summer because he needs that um, that support through the summer because these things don't just you don't turn them on in September and shut them off in June you know they they keep going so we support um, we support those students that way. Um, primarily, that's that's the discussions we have. It's a team approach. Just you know, you get the IEP team around, and and then we'll come to you and say, hey, you know, we have Tom here who who would be a great fit for this program. And then again, we identify the staff and and well, you know, trained staff that can support these students. Right. Now, Michael, take me a little bit. Um, you've been with us. Uh, how many? Is this your this second, is my second year? year? Second year, year with program, us. I yeah. thought correct. Um, Tell me about what you like about the job and actually take me through your four hours a day with us. Yeah, so a couple of years back, my, uh, I was at work. I worked at Kitched Up at Thompson and 
somebody just mentioned to me that there was an opening for a summer school position. So I actually didn't even know I was entering the summer fund program. I thought I was entering a school and I ended up coming to the meeting here and said, I think I'm where I should be. I saw that it was a looser thing. I had been a part of summer fund when I was a child, so I knew a little bit about it. But basically, I get there on 7.45, the start of my day, um, and some kids get dropped off at 8, some kids get dropped off later due to different timing reasons. Um, and I'm, We start off with swings in the morning, and we have, we have like a separate area compared to the other kids. Most of their kids line their bags up, Sabrina and Tom have both seen this, but we stay against a wall where they know their bus stuff will be here, a staff will always be there, so at any time of the day, they can hit that area. Um, we allow them to have free time in the morning. That works really well because we don't often get free time throughout the whole day. So right. any time of free time, playground is very big for my, uh, my kids. So they know that in the morning they'll get that playground time. That's very important to them and also us. And then it's, we're, we're very loose. And I think that's why the program works is the kids see that we're kind of comfortable and loose. You know, we see that they're comfortable and loose. And I think that's the biggest thing that keeps our days, you know, rather easy. And, you know, we can get over speed bumps because of that. But um, it's very easy. We just, you know, in the morning, I'm usually the point guy, and I'll just, just say, hey, you know, one of the staff, could you be with him today? Or could, you know, could you be with him? Like, Lindsay, could you take care of a um, certain child today? And it's always easy. I have amazing staff that help it. Um, there's four stations. The four stations always go well. And we kind of work off not so much a point system, but more of an earn system. So in order to do certain things throughout the day, you have to have a, you know, well enough behavior and a well enough day beforehand to earn that. So our biggest thing is, Fourth station, we have private to ourselves. That's the last station where they can do playground time. And if they do three stations where they do the full station or one break per station, they're able to get that full time of playground as the last station. Sabrina, talk to me a little bit. You're a co-coordinator of the program now with Nicole. Yep. And uh, so you just ta- you just heard what Michael talked about today. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I hear from you and Nicole raving about Michael and the staff there. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how do you feel about having them on site? You know, does it make your job easier? Talk to us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Michael and everyone else who works at Sargent has done such a great job to make sure that not only their kids are taken care of, but our kids as a whole. Um, if we ever need extra hands helping another kid who might be giving us a tough time, they have great strategies that can help. Like you said earlier, even the difficult kids, um, at our camp need those extra supports. So having Michael and Lindsay and Tom and everyone else as our staff as extra supports is great because if we don't know how to handle a situation, they are our go-to people. Um, And what I love about having them at camp is they make their kids feel just as included as everyone else. So it's not separated at all. It's like if you looked at our camp, you would not be able to tell who's their kids, who's our kids. We're all one big camp. And I think that really goes with the model of inclusion and following with what the youth center is really trying to get at. I got to tell you, you warm my heart with that. Cause that, that was actually one of my next questions. My ultimate goal with everything in the youth center here, we have, we have kids that come to the youth center during the school year, autistic kids. We have kids that, um, that have Down syndrome, physical disabilities, et cetera. And my ultimate goal is I don't want anybody to actually come into our building or into our program and actually be able to say, oh, that's a kid that's part of that program. My, my thing is that, you know, if, if it just all looks like we're all just one big happy family in our program, that's great. Um, and one of the things, and just from an observation standpoint, and any of you guys can take this, is I love how all the kids are just very accepting of the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, sensitive to maybe some of their needs. And, you know, I've, I've witnessed them actually talking to our staff, like, you know, something just happened, you might want to talk to that, uh, that type of thing. How, how does that work? So actually, I've had several kids ask me, oh, why are those kids on the swings um, during our snack time when kids aren't allowed to go on the playground? Um, But my best way of explaining to them is that some kids need breaks and they need a break right now, so they're on the swings. And kids are so understanding. When I tell them that, they don't ask again. They're like, oh, okay, sounds good. And they go back to what they're doing. So like you said, I think the environment at Summer Fun is extremely accepting. Um, which is nice to see in kids as young as kindergarten, first and second grade. Absolutely. Let me ask Tom a question. What kind of feedback, uh, because you've been with me obviously since the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, your your kids, your clients, we'll talk them, just the kids within the program, um, feedback from the parents. Do they like the program? Are they worried about the program? Does it meet their needs? Yes, um, I haven't had any negative feedback. I mean, part of, part of my role too is if, if a child is having a difficult day, 
um, to reach out to that parent or guardian and have a discussion with them. Like, hey, I noticed this was going on. Just wanted to fill you in on, on how we, you know, supported or assisted him or her. And they're very appreciative and very grateful for, for that extra support. I know um, a couple of the staff, um, Michael and, and Jody and, and Rob, I believe, had gotten some some positive feedback where emails were sent and letters to say, you know, thank you for what you're doing. So everyone has been on board with it. Um, I think, and we're going to lead into this, I believe, is the next step, though, is really putting out there more so more parents know. And to ha my goal, and I'm going to talk to Marcy about this, is to have more communication early on in the school year. Because just like with anything, if a kid has an IEP meeting in October, November, and then summer fun rolls around in June, it's like, Let's, let's introduce that. Let's take that hour we have with each family during that student's IEP meeting to talk about that extended school year that they're going to have and uh, to, to mention, you know, the youth center and summer fun. But I just want to go back for a second. And I got to say the inclusion piece, when I was in school in North Andover, they didn't have that RAISE acronym. And one thing I've noticed when, when I started at Kittred School up to the high school is it really carried i'm not just saying that like to see the the high school kids i work with now that include it's so different from when i was here it's just a really more opening open and accepting environment and i think that has been just taught so well in the public schools that it's an automatic when they get to summer fun with with everybody here so that's yeah. been no that's a huge. great point uh, you and I and Marcy have sitting down already and we talked a little bit about like and Sabrina knows this work for so long I never rest on our laurels my opinion is we we can always get better every day we can get better and and the three of us have actually talked mm -hmm. about how next year in preparation for next summer right. that we get earlier we we address things we communicate one of the greatest things that Tom's great at is communicating. So any issue that takes place, the amount of communication that takes place from Michael's level to Sabrina's level, uh, up to Tom's level and my level, and then the emails that are sent out in the mm -hmm. afternoon to you know, special ed people that need to know it, the, the communication is flawless. Uh, we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we've had some difficult kids, we've actually had to make some consequences or an, even a more serious case. We had a couple of kids who have had to been suspended for a short period of time out of the program. The communication is amazing. So, you know, when I say that Tom and I and Marcy are sitting down to talk about it, I just think we can take the communication even to a better level. Do you, yes. do you agree with that, Tom? I do. I do agree. Um, it starts getting the principals more involved. It starts more at the school base, um, as far as I'm concerned, in, in giving these ideas to the liaisons that work with the special ed kids so they can support and build this up as we enter the summer months. Um, but it's a full year. Like I said, it's not just, you know, the school year. It's a full year where these kids need support. So the communication has to stay on track. We've, like Rick said, uh, the three of us, Marcy and Rick and myself, has already, have already started these conversations. So, you know, we're going to debrief at the end of the summer, uh, early, early fall, and uh, talk about what we can do to improve and some of the pitfalls we had. So um, it's been great. So I believe that nothing is kumbaya land, even mm. though I think we are having, Sabrina, the best summer ever, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's our goal every year to have the best summer ever. But the reality is it's not perfect every day. We have days that are challenging to, um, you know, Michael and his staff, challenging to my staff. Um, and, and again, Tom and I, we're more of the level up. We don't deal with it on a hands-on basis necessarily like these guys do, and that's why they're, they're so amazing. Um, but talk a little bit about like, yeah, there are some challenging days and how do we deal with those challenging days? Uh, yeah, so there are definitely days where you put your head down, something's, you know, whatever situation is happening is happening and you just, you put one foot in front of the other and you realize that you're not here for you, that you're here to support these children and no matter what, whatever they do, whatever they decide to do, you need to find a way to cope for them and, you know, understand their emotions. I think, you know, we've had days where you just, you seem like this day's never going to end. This day is going on forever, but it does. And something that I not, I not only remind my staff, but I also remind those kids at the end of every day, I usually remind them that every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is a brand new day, a, you know, a night's sleep, a time away from each other can really change a lot. And I always remind that while we do talk about can'ts, we have many cans. You know, a big mm -hmm. topic that we always discuss are can'ts. You know, they can't do this, they can't do that, but I always remind that there, there's do's, there's cans, and there's things that we can do to always, in, in, you know, improve. And you know, keep moving forward. So the tough days get tough, but you know, there's always, always coping methods that you can do. You know, that we teach them. You can do for yourself. So when you walk away from a tough situation, you know, do this, and tomorrow's a new day. How about from our perspective, from our staff, Sabrina, on those difficult days? 
So we too do have difficult days and I've had times where I've had situations that have also made me feel kind of like one foot in the other, how is this happening right now? But being able to kind of realize what's happening in the moment and that the child is the most important part of this job. So finding what works for them, understanding their specific needs, I think is the most important part. And like Michael said, really looking at the child and understanding that maybe something's going on and you need to work with them and not get mad at them for doing something, but understanding their perspective. So I think our staff does an incredible job of taking the child's perspective and working with them rather working against them. Yeah, and I know Sabrina knows my expectations. I know in the past and even this year we had an incident where you know, even a couple principals were saying to me, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to handle this child. Mm -hmm. And my attitude, and they turned around and say, wow, Rick's a great guy. But my attitude was like, let's try it. Like, let's not immediately say it can't work. Mm -hmm. um, and that leads us into it. We do have some kids that are on pretty strict plans. Um, and there are consequences if behaviors become an issue. And we follow that. But to Sabrina and Michael's standpoint is, the next day is a new day and we welcome that person back and we, we try to make it. And to me, I think we've had more successes than not successes in this type of thing. And I think that's what's great. I think what's amazing, and, and I think Tom can echo this too, is that, you know, I, I started off by saying, you know, Michael Michael's trained, Jody's trained, uh, but they're, they're young folks themselves. Um, and then we have a bunch of people that, you know, they're just, they just want to help kids, right? And we try to give them the, as much resources to help them through that. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm excited about, you know, what this has done in the first three years. Mm -hmm. And now I would like to, and you know, we, we've got a, a few more minutes, obviously, in the podcast, but I, I want to get to kind of like what the future is. So as Tom and I and Masi have talked about is, I think this is the best summer ever. I think this yeah. program uh, has gone well. I think it's gone well each year it's gotten better. Um, and again, it's a lot to do with Tom and his people for sure. Um, but to me is like, okay, so why do we only have maybe five kids at Sargent or four kids at Drummond? Mm -hmm. I gotta think there's more kids that could take advantage of the services. And mm -hmm. you know, where do we take that? So Tom, at thoughts from you before we kind of wrap up the, sure. the summer um, and then we have our debrief meeting and obviously then we'll, we'll get together in the springtime and hopefully earlier and we'll, we'll start to plan that. But where do you see this program going from your perspective as a special ed person? I, I generally think that we need to, to make this more formal um, in these meetings and present it to the schools more individually. If that means me going there, you know, and having the discussions with you, Rick, and the special ed department and having these discussions with parents and the liaisons and saying, here's where we're going. This is working. You know, we're, we're three years. We've been successful. This has been the best summer um, yet by far. Um, just to educate them and say, hey, we have this going on. You know, we're, we're lucky enough to have, you know, this whole North Andover has a whole social, mo social emotional learning program and, and a director um, as well. So this is what we are. This is what we do here. So we need to continue it to the summer. Um, so just education and being more formal about it, you know, maybe writing something up and, and just really putting it out there. Absolutely. You know, awareness. And I'm, I want to give a little shout out to this 25 year uh, buddy system that we've had doing. Mm -hmm. And this is something that obviously Michael and his staff has been helpful to us too. But we have a lot of our high school and college kids that have embraced mm -hmm. taking a buddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the buddy, we, we call it three different levels. There's level mm -hmm. one division, level two, and the level three. Level three tends to be more of the kids that need probably almost more of a one to one. Mm -hmm. And these aren't even kids that are part of the, the NAPS program, it's, it's kids that have parents have wanted them to part of the program, how do we make it work? Um, you know, level one is more of maybe a check-in, like how are we doing on that? Um, but it's amazing to me, um, you know, our young staff that one, have volunteered to be a buddy. I mean, I think of people like Ali Rodriguez, mm -hmm. I think of, you know, Jack Castellanos and Emily Sifflin up here, uh, just, you know, embracing this, wanting to be part of that. Um, how do you see that, Sabrina? Because you were a counselor and now an administrator mm -hmm. on that. How's that buddy system working? Right. I think the buddy system has done wonders, not only for the kids, but for staff as well. Um, just over the past six years, seeing not only the buddy system, but also the special ed program grow is incredible because I think having a counselor to check in with is so big for some of these kids. Um, and to others, it might not seem like it, but 
being a buddy and having that ability to check in with the kid and say, hey, how are you doing, really can mean going from a bad day to a great day. Um, So I think having that program in place has been a great stepping stone into allowing the North Amber um, School Department to also come in and provide extra support. But like you said, we have amazing high school staff who have volunteered to help and now are looking into careers into special education like myself. Absolutely. And, we, you know, Sabrina is one of those people. We've had probably two or three a year that, you know, we're going into education, but now they'd actually prefer to go into special education. I have two that want to get into more of the social emotional learning piece. And, mm-hmm. you know, one would like to be a social worker in a school system. And it's, it's pretty exciting. Now, obviously, I have a ton of people that want to be accountants, lawyers and doctors and everything else, which is great. But I think this job has kind of opened up possibilities for people. And, you know, I, we're doing a video of this summer, the best summer ever it's going to be called. And, you know, seeing the smiles and the faces on all these kids we're talking about is it, just been impressive. Michael, let me ask you a quick question before we yeah. get to what we call the final word. Um, you're, you're a little bit older than my staff, not yep. much, but you're a little bit older than my staff. How's my staff embraced your staff? Like, do you, do they include you? I'm hoping. Yeah. It, um, I say it almost every day to Sabrina, to Nicole, to my own staff personally, that I'm so thankful to have the other staff there. I think, you know, we have that meeting at the beginning of the year where we come in and we sit in the chairs and they sit in front of us and, you know, it always feels like, you know, we're kind of over here, you're over there. But the minute you get to camp, that goes away. There's no feeling of anyone's ahead of anybody, you know. Everybody gives an idea. Every idea is worth something. It can be something better. And I think what's awesome is they are able to join with our kids easily because we give them the tools to understand from the goes wrong you can do this mm-hmm. or you can do that so you know years past i don't know how included the kids were with them but i know when my kids leave camp every day it's high fives from every single counselor it's they're waving out the window so i think that having that collaborative with us for them to understand the kids it makes it all inclusive i mean that's so awesome mm-hmm. um and again we see all those smiles all those high fives and uh all I can say is what we've started is working. Um, I working. think can it work better? Probably, um, and I do want to hope to expand that. Let me start. Uh, we'll end the podcast. We'd like to give our guests a final word. So I want to start with you, Sabrina. What would okay. you know? Listen, our listeners are mostly probably going to be our parents, mm-hmm. uh, or um, quite frankly, our professional peers in the community who mm-hmm. follow us, um, teachers. I, I know that. Uh, Masi and a lot of people want to listen to this too. What's your final word to our listeners about what we're trying to do? I would say that in trying to do this all-inclusive program, this is working and it works because of our staff and collaborating and being a team. But I think that this opportunity, like Tom has said, provides not only support throughout the school year from the school department, but leads it into the summer and a lot of kids still need that support over the summer so what we do gives that to these kids absolutely michael how about a final word from you i think the biggest thing that's most important for us our listeners and every you know person at the camp to understand is that fair is not everybody getting the same thing but fair is everybody getting what they need and i think everybody at the camp including the uh, campers understand that very well that our kids need certain things they don't need certain things i think that's the most important so well said. Tom, you're in a position of authority. Uh, your voice will carry a lot in terms of where this program goes. What would you like to say to our parents out there or our peers? I just like, first of all, your kids are in great hands um, from the school department all the way down to the youngest counselor here. Um, they really are. I mean, I've been doing, I've been in the mental health field. Uh, I graduated with my master's in 06. And I can tell you one thing I've learned, one thing that sticks out is you can't teach the skills that, you know, honestly, that all the staff here have. Like, either you have it or you don't. Either you want to work with kids or you don't. It's really an art. I mean, I've worked with a lot of smart people, but if you can't make a relationship with a kid, it doesn't matter, you know, if you had a 4.0 in college or not. But I can tell you, you know, we have a lot of obviously smart people here, but everyone's caring. The enthusiasm, you know, I show up and they're, they're like they said, they're high five, running around, smiles. Everyone's so genuinely excited to work with the kids. So, um, yeah, my daughter, actually, I talked to you about this. She's like, I want to do the summer mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to Rick about it. So, you know, we, we don't live in North Anna and she's like excited. She goes up and says, this is, looks like fun, dad. I want to do this. So, um, that just, you know, I'm a dad, you know, and I think that that's what I want to drive home too, is I have two kids, you know, you know, TJ and Kendall and, um, you know, they're, they're great kids and they see it. They're like, I just want to have fun. I want to do this. So, 
I get it. I get your anxieties. I get what it must be like, you know, if, if a kid does need extra support. Um, I've been there. So, yeah, and you're in good hands in North Andover and definitely at the youth center in summer fun. Well, your uh, children have a father who work in town, so we can kind of make that probably happen. But, um, you know, we pride ourselves in a word that I, you know, I think some people think is cliche. Maybe they say Rick says it too much, um, but we have a culture here, and this culture is not something that happened overnight. It's a culture we've built for years and years and years. This is my 31st year here. Um, we really, when we hire our kids, they have to understand that they got to buy into our culture. They got to want to work with kids. They got to build relationships. And if you don't want to do that, I'm fine with that too. But you can't work for us if you don't have share that. So when you see Tom and Michael, when you see those kids jumping up and down and welcoming every kid, that's a mandate. But I don't really have to mandate it because they want to do it. They, they believe it. They're bought into our culture. I think the 12-hour training helps a lot for our new people. But we have new staff members. Staff members have been around a few years, and we have dinosaurs like Sabrina who've been with us for like <laughs> six years. And... Uh, and, uh, and obviously we love her and everything else. And I, I want to just take the final word to thank you. Thank all of you. Um, and please, Tom, pass it on to everything from Dr. Gilligan down to, to Marcy to believing and supporting, which was my goal, to be all inclusive. Um, and then to Michael. I mean, you are a shining star. I, jo I will be fighting Tom to hire you at some point in time. <laughs> But, you know, you're not the only one. Jo Jody actually used to work for me for seven years as a summer fun counselor. And now he's, he's great, and the kids love him. And, you know, I've got to meet each one of your staff people. They're caring. They, they bought into what we're trying to do, and they're making a difference. Yeah. And then, obviously, Sabrina, you know what I feel about you and our staff. I just think uh, it's amazing what we're doing. Uh, but my biggest thing, let's not rest on our laurels. Uh, let's not just say we're great and it was good this year. How do we make year four even better? And that's going to fall on me and Tom's part. Like we, we got some work to do in that area and we're going to do it. And uh, again, I, I ask parents that are listening to this to, to reach out to the school department. You know, reach yeah. out early on how we can get you involved with that. And, uh, you know, we can continue to uh, even make 2020 the best summer ever. So I want to thank you guys for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll have this up thank later you. today. And as we always finish every podcast, we always say too much passion.